الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Indeed all the praise is for Allah Azza wa Jal We praise him And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our deeds And from the evil of our souls Whom of Allah guides to Al-Islam None can lead him astray And whom of Allah Azza wa Jal calls to go astray There is no guide for him I bear witness that nothing has the right to be worshipped except Allah. He is alone, he has no partner, no associate. And I also bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah is his servant and his messenger. Allah Azza wa Jal, he says that which means, O oh people of Iman, fear Allah as Allah Azza wa Jal should be feared. And do not die unless you are a Muslim. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, indeed, the best speech is the speech of Allah. And the best guidance was his sunnah, that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did, and that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allowed to take place in his presence, and he didn't reprimand or correct it. And the worst affairs are things newly introduced into Al-Islam. And everything newly introduced into Al-Islam is an innovation. And all innovations are a misguidance. And everything that is misguided will lead to the hellfire. May Allah wa ta'ala protect us from the hellfire. Ameen. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says in the Qur'an, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِّنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنًا فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةٌ طَيِّبًا وَلَا نَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, Whoever does righteous good deeds, whomsoever does righteous good deeds, male, or female, male or female, and he or she is a believer, then Allah wa ta'ala, He is going to grant them a good life. He's going to grant them a good life. And He's going to reward them for the best of deeds that they used to perform. The ulama, they say this reward is paradise. Brothers and sisters in the Islam, We are working towards paradise. This is the goal for every believer, every believer, male and female. The goal is paradise. Imam al-Shatibi rahimahullah ta'ala, 
he says there are alamat al-sa'ada yani al-sa'ada fi dunya wal akhira he said there are signs of sa'ada happiness success and this success is in this life and in the hereafter there are signs actions if they will perform these actions or an indication that a person is going to have a good life and the first sign the imam al-shatibi rahimahullah ta'ala mentions tayseeru ta'atillah it is ease in worshiping or obedience to allah azza wa jal brothers and sisters in al-islam we have been created to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And from the greatest command that Allah wa Ta'ala has placed on mankind is to worship Him alone. As He Azza wa Jal says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجَنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind nor jinn except to worship Allah. This is ibadah, ibadatun lillah. It is very important, my brothers and sisters, that we as Muslims do not lose focus of the goal. And that is to obey Allah. From the greatest commandments that Allah Ta'ala commands the believers with is to worship Him alone. And yes, many of us may say that we are Muslim now. We submit to Allah wa Ta'ala. However, my brothers and sisters, there are things whereby Muslims do which invalidate their Islam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, أَخْوَفُ مَا أَخَافُ عَلَىٰ أُمَّتِي الشرق الأزغر The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the thing that I fear for my ummah the most is the inconspicuous shirk, the inconspicuous polytheism, something that you cannot see, it's hard to sight. And then when he was asked, what is this? He said, الرِّيَاء he said, it is to do an action. Not for the pleasure of Allah, rather to be seen. Or rather to be heard. Brothers and sisters in Al-Islam, Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ مِنْ يُشْرِكَ بِي Allah Ta'ala, He does not forgive for those who associate partners with Him. وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ However, He forgives for anything lesser than that. It is important that we always stay focused and render all acts of ibadah to Allah. When we pray, we pray to Allah, Lillah, Billah. For the pleasure of Allah, seeking Allah Ta'ala's aid. This is important. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَحُدِّينَ He said, you have not been commanded, or they have not been commanded except to worship Allah wa ta'ala alone. All acts of ibadah are rendered to Allah. Khawf is rendered to Allah. Rija is rendered to Allah. Al-istighadah is rendered to Allah Azza wa Jal. At-tawakkul, dependency and reliancy, is only for Allah wa ta'ala. Al-isti'ana is lillah. These acts are for Allah wa ta'ala alone. It is not enough for the believer or the Muslim, rather, or the person to say, I believe in Allah Azza wa Jal, but he prays to something else other than Allah. It's not enough. It's not enough for the disbelievers. And these are actions that will render a person's La ilaha illallah null and void. This is the first sign. Tawheed. Worshipping Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Imam al-Shatibi rahimahullah ta'ala, he said the second sign, alamat al-sa'adat fi dunya wal akhirah the sign whereby a person is going to be successful in this life and in the hereafter, muwafiqatu li sunnah It is that a person's actions are in agreement in correspondence with the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is important, my brothers and sisters. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَنْ أَحْدَثَ فِي أَمْرِنَا مَا هَذَا لَيْسَ مِنْهُ فَهُوَ رَدْ Whoever innovates into this religion or this affair of ours, it shall be rejected. 
And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man amila amila laysa alayhi amruna fa huwa rad. Whoever does an action that is not from our affairs, it shall be rejected. Some people, we are talking about Muslims, feel that it is not necessary to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is very unfortunate. Right? They say the Quran is sufficient enough. The Quran, my brothers and sisters, the Sunnah explains it. So how do we know the correct understanding if not for the Sunnah? How can we understand the ayats of Allah Taala if not from the example, the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala fahm sahaba with the understanding of the Sahaba? It's not possible. It's not possible to worship Allah Taala. And Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala, he will caution the people to be aware, to be aware of ra'i, of opinions. He said, ajabtu, ta'ajabtu, min ya'arifuna al-isnaad aw al-asaneed wa sihha. He said, I am amazed with the people who knows the chain of narrators in a hadith that traces back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and its authenticity, right? However, they go and take the opinion of Sufyan ibn Thawri, rahimahullah ta'ala, was a great scholar. It's a great scholar. However, they know the chain and its authenticity. And he recited the verse of Allah ta'ala, فَلْيَحْذِرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ أَمْرِ أَن تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةً أَوْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ and be aware of those who oppose the affair of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that a fitna may befall them, or a painful punishment. Brothers and sisters in Al Islam, from this verse we see those who oppose the affair of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you're going to be maftoon, you're going to be in a state of calamity, or you're going to be punished. Brothers and sisters in Al Islam, Allah Taala He says in the Quran, "Qul in kuntum tuhibun Allah, fatbi'uni." He commanded the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to say, "Say, indeed, if you love Allah, if you truly love Allah, then follow the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam." Right? If you love Allah, follow the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If you do this, you habibukum Allah. Allah Taala will love you. وَيَغْفِرُ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And he will forgive you of your sins. Allah Ta'ala, he says, وَمِنْ يُتِعِ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ Whoever obeys Allah and his messenger, فَقَدَ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا For indeed, this person have achieved the greatest achievement. This is paradise. This is the second sign. A person's actions is in accordance to the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Imam al-Shatibi rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, the third sign is suhbatu ahl salah It is to accompany the people of rectification and righteousness. And this is very important, my brothers and sisters. If we claim that we want to be successful, then we have to be with those who are successful. We cannot be with those who are criminals. Those who are doing disobedient actions to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "مثل جليس الصالح وجليس الصوه كحامل المسك ونافخ الكير." He said, "The example of a good sitting, a person who sits with good people and bad people, is like the example of a person who carries sweet perfumes and the one who works as an iron smith. Right? He works with metal and steel." The one who carries sweet perfumes, my brothers and sisters, either he's going to give you some, or he may sell some to you. At the very least, you're going to smell something good and sweet. As for the person who works with steel, a blacksmith, right? Either his actions are going to burn you. At the very least, you're going to smell something despicable from him. Brothers and sisters in Al-Islam, the ulama, they say, how do you know a person is through his friends? Because a person may hide his actions. However, you cannot hide your friends. The Sahaba, 
and the righteous people. They will be with those who are righteous, those who are God-fearing, those who were sitting in the majalis al ilm, the circles of knowledge, seeking the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. And they will not be with criminals. They will not be with those who are disobeying Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And unfortunately, we have people who sit with people who think that they are upon obedience to Allah, but they are not. They are not. Why? Because they talk against the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They talk against the Sahaba. This is an indication of what's in their heart and how they feel. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam command the believers to love the Sahaba. This is from Iman, it's to love them. And to not talk bad about them. And to not talk bad about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's family. And the ulama, they will say, when a person of deviation comes to you and tries to talk to you and say something to you, they will take their thumbs and they will place them in their ears and they will not listen to anything this individual has to say until he leaves. Bismillah walhamdulillah wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah azza wa jal he says that which means man amila salihah whoever does righteous deeds righteous deeds good deeds and they are a believer male or female then Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is going to grant them a good life and he's going to reward them for the best of deeds or the best of these, that which they used to do in this dunya. He's going to reward them tremendously. And that is Jannah. Imam Shatibi rahimahullah ta'ala, he says they are signs. And the next sign that we would like to talk about, my brothers and sisters, is the sign where Imam Shatibi rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, from the alamat al-sa'adah, the signs of happiness or success in this life and in the hereafter, is that you find the believers aiding one another. You find a person, he is aiding his Muslim brother. Right? And this is very important. This is very important. For indeed Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he is in the aid of the abd, of the servant, so long as he is in the aid of his brother. This is very important. The Muslims have to aid one another. The Muslims have to work with one another. The Muslims have to show a level of respect for one another. Naam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to the Sahaba one day, this hadith is authentically reported, أَلَا أُخْبِرُكُمْ بِخِيَارِكُمْ مِنْ شَرِّكُمْ Shall I not inform you the best of you from the worst of you? So the Sahaba, they said, بَلَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ so the Prophet Sallallahu he said, the best of you are those who the people, when they see you, they expect good from you. And they are free. They are full, they have full confidence that you will not harm them. You will not harm them. He said, these are the best of the people. When the believer sees you, he expects some good from you. And he don't expect any type of harm that's going to come from you. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, وَشَرُّكُمْ The worst of the people, the worst of you, or when the people look at you, they have no type of level of expectation of any good coming from you. And they expect that you're going to harm them. They expect that you're going to talk about them. They expect that you're going to backbite them and slander them. And they give you the salams, they expect that you're not going to even respond to them. Nah. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Brothers and sisters in Al-Islam, Let's be from the best of the people. The people whereby they see the believer. They see you, they expect some good to come from you. And this right here is based upon what you do. Your history. Your history with the people. How you deal with them. Your interactions with them. Right? You have to be in service and aid of your Muslim brother. إِنَّ اللَّهَ فِي عَوْنِ الْعَبْدِ مَا كَانَ الْعَبْدِ فِي عَوْنِ أَخِي Indeed Allah Ta'ala is in the aid of the servant 
so long as the servant is in aid of his brother. The next alama, sign of sa'adat fi dunya wal akhirah is mura'at al awqat. A person gives careful consideration to his or her time. Right? A person don't think that they're going to live in this dunya forever and ever and ever. And the time that you have, you have to spend it in the servitude of Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Kun fi dunya ka'annaka gharib aw abir sabil. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, be in this life as if you are a passerby or a wayfarer, you're passing by the road. And you are taking your provisions for the hereafter, my brothers and sisters. This is very important. This is very important. Because many of us think that we have time. And we don't think that none of us are going to die anytime soon. Right? You have babies that are dying on a daily basis. People who are suffering. And people who are not suffering. And they are dying. Be in this life as if you are a passerby. Passer because none of us know when Allah Taala is going to cause our death. None of us know. And the last point that we would like to talk about, my brothers and sisters, is that Imam al-Shatibi rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, الْإِحْتِمَامُ لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ That we have to have some type of concern or care for the Muslims in general. We have to care about our Muslims, regardless of where they're at, regardless of what language they speak, regardless of what color their skin is, right? Regardless, we have to have some type of concern for the fellow Muslim brother and Muslim sister. We have an example, an authentic hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu one of the Sahaba by the name of at tufail ibn Amr, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And at tufail he was from the tribe, tribe of Dawus. Right? So when he accepted Islam, what did he do? He went and he called his people. He went and he called his people. However, his people rejected him. So what did he do? He went back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah, inna ahl al-dawus halakat, asat wa abat. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, the people of Dawus have been destroyed. They have rejected and disobeyed the call. So at tufail he said, فَدْعُوا اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِمْ He said, make dua against them. Make dua against them, that they'll be destroyed. This is what he, this is what he did. He asked the Prophet wasallam to make dua against them. So the Prophet wasallam he started to supplicate and he raised his hands. He said, اللَّهُمَّ هَدِينَا أَهْلَ دَوْسِ وَأَتِي بِهِمْ if the Prophet sallallahu did not make dua against the people of Dawus, rather he made dua for them. He said, oh Allah, guide the people of Dawus and bring them. Bring them to Islam. Bring them. And the people of Dawus started to come. What fa'idah did we get from this? Brothers and sisters in Al-Islam, a tufail wanted the people of Dawus to be destroyed. Why? Because they rejected the call of Allah Taala, And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he called, he made dua for them. If the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a great concern for the people who are non-believers to accept Islam, then what about the people who are already Muslims? What about your Muslim brother, your Muslim sister? When you go to them and you give them nasiha, right? You give them sincere advice and they don't accept it. Do we make dua against one another? Do we do this? If the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't do it for the non-believer, then what makes you think we should do it for the believer, for the Muslim? How about make dua for one another if we truly have concern for one another? We pray for one another. We ask Allah to guide our Muslim brothers and our Muslim sisters. This is important.
This is the example of the Prophet Sallallahu if he's going to supplicate for the non-believer and the whole entire tribe, right? Because this may be the level of expectation for the one who doesn't have ilm. He rejected Allah and his messenger. He's destroyed. If the Prophet Sallallahu didn't do it for the non-believer, what makes you think that he would do something like this for the believer? This is not the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This deen is nasiha. It's sincere advice. And when we give nasiha to one another, we have concern for one another. And when we approach our Muslim brother, we want our Muslim brother to benefit from our nasiha. For whatever we're going to tell him. Subhanallah. Look at the ulama, Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala. He was in a car crash. A car crash. The car flipped over. So the person who was trying to get him out, he was calling, begging upon Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, Ya Satir, Ya Satir. So Shaykh al-Albani said, Ya Shab, no, Satir, don't call upon Allah by that name. That's not his name. Satir, say this. He's in a car upside down, my brothers and sisters, and somebody's trying to free him. And he's still correcting with nasiha, sincerity. Did that man take it personal? <clears throat> this is the problem with many of us. We take things personal. However, it's sincerity. Brothers and sisters in Al-Islam, may Allah Ta'ala bless us with these sons. May Allah Ta'ala have mercy upon us and forgive us of our sins and through His mercy grant us all into paradise. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar.